Welcome to this candidates forum for those individuals seeking the office of mayor for the city of Alabaster. I'm Doug Adair, executive director of the Alabama Wildlife Center and the chair of the Shelby County Chamber's Governmental Affairs Work Group. On behalf of our chamber, we're pleased to co-host this program with Shelby County Newspapers, Inc. We hope that you find this program both interesting and informative, and we're pleased that you could be with us. Before we begin, let me express our thanks to each of the candidates in alphabetical order, Scott Brakefield and Robert Goodner for joining us for this virtual forum. Gentlemen, your willingness to put yourselves before the voters of the city of Alabaster is a true testament to your desire to serve and lead your community. Now, let me explain our format for this virtual forum. Each candidate will be asked the same questions and given two minutes to respond. The sequence for answering questions will rotate alphabetically. Neither of the candidates have been provided with the questions prior to this event. The candidates will respond to these questions in this alphabetical sequence with each candidate alternating, responding to the question first. The rotation sequence will continue in this fashion through the end of the question and answer portion of the forum. In the interest of time, there will be no opening statements, but there will be an opportunity for each candidate to provide a closing statement. These closing statements should be no longer than three minutes. Jordan Powell, Director of Investor Development with the Chamber, will act as timekeeper and provide each of the candidates with a countdown during their answers by holding up a card indicating the time remaining. Kirk Manser, President and CEO with the Shelby County Chamber, will be posing the questions to the candidates. Now let's begin with our first question. To begin the question and answer portion of our forum, we'll start with Mr. Brakefield. Mr. Brakefield, why do you want to be mayor for the city of Alabaster? That's a great question. Uh, I guess I'll first start just being a hometown guy, being a hometown product. I uh, grew up in the city of Alabaster. I attended uh, Thompson schools from K through 12. Married a hometown girl. Uh, we moved away for a couple years uh, for me to get into medical sales. And then we quickly decided that we wanted to get back towards home. So we moved back. We've had our children. We raised our, uh, raising our children. Uh, we're sending them through the Thompson, the Alabaster City School System. And we just love the community. Uh, we're completely invested in the community. I've served four, uh, three terms on the Alabaster City Council, the last two terms as council president. My wife is a, a, a principal at Meadowview Elementary School. Our kids are, our twin boys are freshmen at the high school and we've got one that's a sophomore at the University of Alabama. So we just love the city of Alabaster. We've invested our lives in the city of Alabaster and there's gonna be nothing that I take more pride in than being the mayor of Alabaster. Thank you. Now, Mr. Goodner, same question to you. Why do you want to be mayor for the city of Alabaster? To be the mayor of the city of Alabaster would be a great honor and a privilege. Um, my whole life I have been uh, blessed to be able to serve others, uh, best blessed to be able to uh, show some leadership traits and to take responsibility and, and uh, I have a willingness to take on responsibility and take on those issues because I care about people. I care about people and want to listen to people. Uh, I think things in Alabaster, there needs to be a change where the citizens of Alabaster are listened to. Uh, where they are respected, where their ideas are considered, uh, that they're not pushed aside, that they are brought up for serious consideration, not just as an appreciation because you have a thought, but to really be considered if it's a viable option to where we can do things better. Conflict is great. Conflict makes us work harder. It makes us consider more. And uh, I believe that uh, as a mayor, it's, it's not a, a position of authority, but it is a position of responsibility. Uh, and that responsibility is something to be taken very seriously. And uh, having 
been in Alabaster since 1993, having raised my children here, uh, having been ordained in the church here, uh, having just to watch the city grow and be as blessed as, as it is, is exciting. And I want to serve the city because I want to serve the citizens. And uh, I'm able to do it full time. That's another blessing. Uh, it won't be a part time position for me. It'll be a full time position to which I can fully engage and do what I think will be led by the citizens of Alabaster. Now we'll begin the second question with you, Mr. Goodner. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibility of the city of Alabaster's mayor? I believe that the responsibilities and priorities in the position of mayor is to be one to set the tone. Set the tone for those representatives from the wards. To set the tone where the citizens know that the administration, that the government, one, cares and is willing to listen to what they have to say. And to be truly concerned about the infrastructure about streets that need to be paved, about public safety, about our children in our schools, about our education. But how are we supporting that infrastructure? How are we supporting the small businesses? And there again, I believe the position of mayor is a, that of a, a position of responsibility, responsibility of leading and setting the tone, of setting those concepts of operation and what is our intent? Why are we doing what we're doing? How are we going to get there? And what are we going to do once we achieve that? Thank you. Mr. Brakefield, same question to you. What, in your opinion, are the priorities and responsibility of the city of Alabaster's mayor? I think the main priority and responsibilities of the mayor of Alabaster is being a face of our community. Uh, typically, if there's a concern or if there's an issue within the city of Alabaster, most people want to speak to the mayor. So being that leader, that person in the forefront that's capable and understanding and willing to meet with the community, uh, to hear concerns, to address those concerns. But I think the biggest thing about being the mayor of Alabaster is just being accessible. Um, you know, when you step into the role of politics, uh, it is, uh, it, it's an open door. Uh, and, and you need to understand that, uh, that it never shuts off 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In the world that we live in, you're gonna be answering emails, phone calls, text messages about concerns that are going on in your community. And with me being raised there, living there pretty much the majority of my life, there's nothing more that I want to do than to address those concerns and continue to make Alabaster the best place possible that we can to, to live, to raise a family. So when I look at the most important functions of, of being a mayor, it is obviously being responsive to our community, being the leader of our community, and then making sure that our department heads have what they need to run the day-to-day -day operations of each different department, whether it be the police department, fire department, city services, or whatever, equipping them with the right tools they need to efficiently and effectively run their departments. Those are the two things that I think are critical for a mayor to do. Thank you. And now for our third question, we'll begin again with Mr. Brakefield. When prospective new or growing businesses evaluate new locations, they often seek out incentives or assistance from the city. What is your stance on incentivizing businesses to grow and what assistance programs do you feel should be in place? Okay, so being on the council for 12 years now, I've seen a multitude of different options that we have, uh, have approached. We have gone through the process of doing incentives up front, uh, being responsible for infrastructure and things like that up front. I've seen uh, the process of where we've gone a graded sales tax rebate, where maybe the first year we rebate 80% of the sales tax, and then that gets less as the years go on for a business. And then here recently, we've even gone to the point of putting everything on the back end, you know, all the incentives on the back end through a sales tax or a you know, rebate or a property tax rebate or things like that. Those are three unique different options for different aspects of different businesses that come to that, uh, the city of Alabaster. And I think it's important to understand what the city needs and how those potential uh, partnerships can work with those businesses that are looking to come to Alabaster. Uh, obviously, Alabaster is an exciting place to live. It's an exciting place to bring your business to. It's the largest city in the, in the county. So we do get a lot of requests. But to make sure that it's the right fit and make sure that we're a willing partner uh, is key because at the end of the day, a lot of these businesses that want to come, to your point, want incentives to come. And we don't want to get into a point of we incentivize a business too much and we don't see any revenue or return from that 
that investment in infrastructure or, or whatever it may be. So being able to have those discussions up front, use our experience over the last 12 years uh, of different uh, avenues that we can look at, I think will be critical as we move through the next few years. Thank you. Mr. Goodner, same question to you. When prospective new or growing businesses evaluate new locations, they often seek out incentives or assistance from the city. What is your stance on incentivizing business to grow and what assistance programs do you feel should be in place? Tremendous question because for a city to grow, for a city to become a legacy city, we're going to need new blood into the, the city. One is first we have to support our small businesses and I believe if we show support in a proactive manner that we believe in our small businesses that other bigger businesses, businesses wanting to come into Alabaster, they see that. They see that, hey, we're willing to do what it takes to keep our money here in Alabaster, to support our tax base, to support our citizens who have these businesses and are willing to put forth that risk here in town. So incentivize, that's something that we have to really look at. What is the long term? What is it at the end of the day, after that incentive is in place, what is it that we've achieved? Has it been good for the city of Alabaster? Could it have been better for the city of Alabaster? Or did it hurt? That's what we need to look at. Where did it hurt? How can we do it better? Are we sacrificing too much just to get somebody in here? That's wrong. Okay, the sacrifice has got to be in the right guidance. There again, I go back to the power of why. You know, we know what we need to achieve. We know what we need to have. And we know how to get there. There's some smart people out here. They're really smart. They know what they're doing. But the bottom line is, why are we doing it? What is our intent? What do we want to achieve? And why do we want to achieve it? Not what, not how, but why? And that's the bottom line. If we're con convicted and convinced that this is the right thing for the citizens of the city of Alabaster, then let's look at that incentive package. They're out there, okay? It's just how are we going to prioritize what's best for our people? Thank you. And now for our fourth question, Mr. Goodner, we'll begin with you. Where do you see the city of Alabaster in four years? In four years, I see Alabaster as a place where people want to come. I don't want to be like any other city. I want to be an example. I want to be a light where people think of Alabaster as those people have it going on. Okay, they're bright, they're, they have a future, they are viable, they're interested, they're involved. They had a growing business community. They're taking care of their streets. They're taking care of their public safety. They're taking care of widening the roads, their traffic management. They're addressing these important issues that affect everyday life. People coming to and from work and at work. Okay, they, they, I want them to see this is a place where I want to take my family, where we want to set up, where my kids are raised, they get a great education. Our system, our school system is second to none. It's a wonderful job that has been done. So we need to continue that excellence and we need to let people know this is who we are. Not, not we just have a school that's full of great students, but we have a community that's involved, not just in the school, but they're involved in the rest of the city. They're involved in the rest of the businesses. They care and they come out to events, okay? They greet each other, okay? It's they're walking around going, man, it's a good day to be an alabaster because we take care of each other and our administration cares about us. We have public safety. You know, there's a way to enforce, there's a way to, uh, to, to take care of our city as far as law enforcement without being overbearing, without being overburdened. But we take care of our people. The safety comes first and everything else falls into place. But in five, four years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I want people to come to Alabaster because this is the place to live. This is the place to raise our family. And those kids, those children of that family come to live in Alabaster, not because mom and dad are there, but because of the city and mom and dad happen to live there. And then the grandkids get to stay. That's what we have to do is have a legacy city. Thank you. Mr. Brakefield, same question to you. Where do you see the city of Alabaster in four years? I see the city of Alabaster continuing to grow, continuing to be a vibrant community. Uh, here in the last couple months, we've had some exciting meetings with uh, residential developers that are excited to come to Alabaster. Uh, we've had some exciting meetings with uh, developers that are looking to bring unique, uh, different things to Alabaster that we currently don't have. So I can see Alabaster continuing to go, uh, grow, continuing to prosper, and that's a lot around our school system. You know, having Alabaster City Schools there, we're attracting families 
you know, each day, each month that are looking for quality education for their children and they're moving to Alabaster. So when they move to Alabaster, we want to be able to provide them with the services that they're not on, that they're looking for in their school system, but also that they're looking for in their city. So I continue to see that Alabaster will continue to progress. Uh, we've got a good growth record over the past, you know, 12 years that I've been involved in the city council and I, I see no reason for that to, to change moving forward. Thank you. And for our fifth question, Mr. Brakefield, we'll begin with you. What are three specific things you hope to accomplish if you're elected mayor? Three specific things that I hope to accomplish if I'm elected mayor. Uh, I think a big emphasis as we move into the future for the city of Alabaster will be in, is our continued improvement for our quality of life. Uh, working with our parks and rec department to continue to provide those opportunities, not only for our youth, but our adults. Uh, in December, we commissioned a study. We sent out a survey in the spring. We got a lot of feedback and really kind of gave us a map to follow to address the needs to address a lot of the quality of life issues that, that may be popping up in, in the city of Alabaster. So addressing those needs over the next four years is, is one of the main pillars of my campaign. I'm a big advocate for our parks and rec department. Also, continued support of our school system. Uh, I think our school system is one of our greatest economic engines as we move to the future. Uh, the, more, the better that our school system performs, the more families want to move to Alabaster. The more families that want to move to Alabaster, the more retail and commercial development want to follow. The more that follows, the more property values increase. So it's a kind of a win-win-win for everybody. So supporting our parks, supporting our uh, school system, and lastly, every community wants to know that they're safe. Continued the support of our public safety is critical. Uh, I've consistently supported our public safety over the years by investing in new equipment. Uh, we've got a big project going on right now with the Alabaster Police Station, uh, so it'll be exciting to see that come on board. And we have continued uh, capital needs within our fire department that we'll continue to address. So those are three of the things that I really look toward accomplishing as we move through the next four years. Thank you. Mr. Goodner, same question. What are three things that you hope to accomplish if you're elected mayor? The first thing, my first priority, and, and going around and, and talking to the citizens of Alabaster. One of the great things that I have, have been involved with with the city as a part-time employee for the last year, I've gotten to talk to citizens in the city. I've gotten to talk to city employees. And I've listened and, and heard what they're saying, and, and some of these things are repetitive. And those three, three things are, one, what are our options with recycling and trash and rubbish? It may sound trivial to others because it doesn't affect them, but to that person that lives on that street, that's the most important thing to them. So that's how we have to address that. That's very important. Secondly, you know, we want to look at the communication between the administration and the citizens, the city council and the citizens, the city council and the school administration. There's got to be better communication because that's where everybody finds out why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And if there's questions about why we're doing this, how can we address and what are our options? So what we have to look at trash and recycling, absolutely. That's one of that, those first things that, that people are looking at and they ask me, when they, especially now that they know I'm running for mayor. But secondly, they, they want to know what's going on and why things are done. Why did the city buy this piece of property? Why did they buy this equipment when it should have been over here? What are the reasons? People have a right to know it's their tax dollars. There's no top secrecy. Let's be transparent. Let's tell them. And people then have the, 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 the common sense to accept things if they realize that's what really needs to be done. And physical responsibility, you know, it, having to pick three is, is really hard. Physical responsibility, I guess, I think that ties back into sound judgment. But our, our public safety, our public safety, we want to have a city known that it's safe to come to. Okay? It's safe to come to where you can take a walk, where you can take a ride, you can go in a store, but you feel comfortable in your own yard, your own house, and in your own city. Thank you. And for our sixth question, Mr. Goodner, we'll begin with you. What plans, if any, do you have to help attract more businesses into the city of Alabaster? What plans? I think it all starts with, with looking at what we have right now. Let's step back and let's take a breath. What's needed? What's here? You know, how are people getting in and out? Do we need another store? Or do we need another business such as this? What do we need? What do we want? What are the people looking for? Where they don't have to go to another city to get something. Entertainment-wise, 
uh, social lives, you know, food products, cars, you know, repair work, all the gamut of things that are everyday life. What do we have? What do we need? Okay, and how do we attract to get them there? And the first thing we have to do is once again show that we support the businesses that are in our city. We support the businesses. And two very important things I think we have to look at, especially nowadays as more and more traffic comes down this way, is we've got to look at our traffic management program. Okay? Um, I've written traffic management programs. I worked, I'm a retired state trooper. I was a division chief, I was a troop commander, and I was the operations officer for Highway Patrol. I've worked with DOT. I've worked with traffic management plans. I've developed and wrote the plan for the contraflow or the reverse lane plan coming from South Alabama to North Alabama in the event of a storm. I've worked with that. That was a year-long project that we worked on. I understand the system and how the the studies go, the research go, as to how traffic flow needs to go. It can be delivered, it can be controlled, but if businesses know we have a good traffic plan and there's going to be a good traffic flow coming in and out all times of the seasons, that's where we got them and that's where we can attract them in. You pull them in that with public safety, but it all starts by stepping back and going, we need to change. What's our direction? Why are we doing this? What do we need? Why do we need it? Okay, who are we going to service it? And now let's get the people there with our traffic flow program. Thank you. Mr. Brakefield, same question to you. What plans, if any, do you have to help attract businesses into the city of Alabaster? I think the biggest thing that we need to continue to invest in to attract businesses to the city of Alabaster is infrastructure. Um, we have just completed uh, with our partnership with ALDOT and uh, with our help from our state senator Cam Ward and our representatives Matt Friday and April Weaver, uh, ALDOT has completed their expansion of the 65, uh, the bridge, the on-ramp, everything like that. So that is key. We've got to be able to move people around our city. Uh, the expansion of 119, uh, the initial project had it terminating its uh, Veterans Park. ALDOT called us, told us that it was over budget. They wanted to kill the project. We worked with our state representatives you know, vigorously to come up with a different idea. Now we're going to terminate it a little bit shorter, but it's still going to improve traffic flow in the city of Alabaster. We have got to continue to improve our infrastructure to move people around the city because if we can move people around the city, then that's going to make businesses come to the 119 corridor to be comfortable putting their business down there, knowing that it's not a standstill parking lot and it's a challenge to get in and out of their business. You know, so it's imperative that we continue our infrastructure improvements, working with our, our builders to continue to attract new businesses and new opportunities, especially down the 119 corridor. For our seventh question, Mr. Brakefield, we'll begin with you. One of the best ways to attract and retain business is to ensure that their workforce needs are met now and in the future. How do you believe we can prepare our K-12 students to be strong, productive members of our workforce pipeline and to meet the needs of employers? Great question. I think that's an evolving question. As we continue to see the impacts of COVID, it's really completely changed our workforce. It's really shown how many people can really work from home, who can't work from home, who's essential employees, who's not. So I think working with Alabaster City Schools to ensure that our students are equipped no matter what it is, whether it's a skill, whether it's a trade, whether it's a technical uh, you know, uh, issue that they want to, you know, focus on for their career, nursing, uh, education, all those different things are evolving industries now because of what we're learning through this pandemic. And I know my wife is an elementary school teacher, so it's something as simple as teaching school is now difficult. So it's, it's important that we work with Alabaster City Schools and the Alabaster City Schools has those parameters in place so that we can address those needs for the future. So a student feels like, hey, I don't have to go to college. I can follow this path. I can go and get a skill. I can come out of Alabaster City Schools certified in electrical engineering or, or whatever it may be. There's not a need to go pursue a four-year degree because now I can get into the workforce. And we need to make sure that that is acceptable and that is understood for our students. Uh, and that's the critical part of it, is really making sure that our students understand, hey, it's, it's, it's good. It's a positive thing to be able to have a skill and have a trade and get out into the workforce. But the big thing is, is just making sure that Alabaster City Schools is equipped to educate and train our next century workers. Thank you. 
And Mr. Goodner, same question. One of the best ways to attract and retain business is to ensure that their workforce needs are met now and in the future. How do you believe we can prepare our K-12 students to be strong, productive members of our workforce pipeline and to meet the needs of employers? First, we got to ensure that our school system is not just a beautiful building. Right now, it's not just a beautiful building. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful building, yes, nobody can agree with that. We have wonderful services, okay? We have wonderful teachers, we have a wonderful system, we have a wonderful board, no question about that. We have to maintain that excellence. And how do we do that? By ensuring this is where people want to come and move to. This is where we want our kids to go. We support our schools. We do support our schools. However, we have to realize that uh, with those schools, we have to support the remaining s section of the community. We can't leave them out. That's for those kids that are going in there. What's more important is not really the building itself, but it's what's inside that building. It's who's teaching our kids. Okay, it's the influence that those teachers, the service staff, the administration staff, the principals, the school board, the whole administration, how are they impacting our children? What kind of influence, what kind of environment are we setting for them? What is the tone? Why are we teaching what we're teaching? And let the kids know that. Let's be open. But with that, we open up several things for those kids. Avenues now that we know that we're need, are needed in America in our economic times. Trade cap crafts. Let's open up these, these things where kids, maybe they don't want to go to college, but they want to learn a trade. Let's track them into that. Let's give them those options. Special needs. We've got to address our special needs students. We really have to drive home because they have a place in society. We have to let people know that we care about those special needs kids, those kids that need to learn a trade, those kids that aren't just quite their athlete. Not everybody's going to get a professional contract, but they can be a viable, important part of our society and of our city if we influence them with a positive atmosphere. Thank you. And now for our final question as part of the question and answer portion of the forum, uh, Mr. Goodner, we'll begin with you. Why should the citizens of Alabaster elect you mayor? I think the people of Alabaster need to elect somebody that cares about what they think, that cares about their quality of life, that cares about their children. I care about the speeders through the subdivision. You know, I've, I've seen a lot as a state trooper. I've seen a lot as my military career overseas and also in, in deployments here in the United States in natural disasters. Uh, I care. I'm not a career politician. I'm, I'm not. I just I believe in common sense and I believe we're not doing it. I believe things need to change and I think this common sense, why are we doing what we're doing? It needs to be done. We know what needs to be done. Let's prioritize what needs to be done and then why did we prioritize it? How do we do it? We know what needs to be done. But bottom line is, this isn't a career. I want to do this. I don't have to do this. I want to do this because I care about my city. I care about where it's going. I care about where it's going to be. I care about my kids. You know, I have a daughter that lives in Australia. You know, she lives and works with autistic kids on that far end of the spectrum in Australia. She renewed her contract, but eventually I want her to not renew her contract anymore, but to come home. And I want her to come home to Alabaster because it's home. And it's home because it's a great place to be, because the people want to be here, not because they have to be. Not because they have to be because of a job, but they moved here because they have a job, but they see what we have and they want to be part of it. Thank you. And Mr. Brakefield, same final question to you. Why should the citizens of Alabaster elect you mayor? Well, I think the, the mayor's election this year is going to be an interesting one. Uh, and it's going to be one that, in my opinion, experience should matter. Um, I came on board in 2008 in the worst of financial times. Um, I have seen us on a shoestring budget, and I've seen us become very prosperous over the last few years. I have the experience to lead Alabaster for the next four years, without a doubt, hands down. Uh, I've been involved in budgetary talks. I've been involved in funding of departments. I've been involved in recruiting uh, businesses to Alabaster, developers to Alabaster. Experience should matter. 
uh, in this uh, election, and I'm the one with the experience. So I'm looking forward to capitalize on that experience. I'm looking forward to meeting and, and talking about some of my plans for Alabaster and continuing to capitalize on what we've got going in Alabaster, uh, the progress that we've made, the investments in our Parks and Rec Department, the investments in our school system, the investments in our public safety, the investments in our infrastructure. These are all things that I've learned during the last 12 years on the city council. And, and it hasn't been a smooth, easy sailing. Like I said, you know, we've, we've had some very difficult times early on. Uh, and here lately, some more prosperous times. So I have the experience to be financially responsible in both instances. In the instance of, hey, we've got to tighten our shoestring, our, our belts, and be very frugal. Or, hey, we have a little bit of extra. How do we invest back into our community so our taxpayers can see where their tax dollars are going? And I think experience is going to play an important matter as we move forward into this election. Thank you. That concludes the question and answer portion of our forum. We'll now move into the closing comments and we'll begin with Mr. Goodner. Mr. Goodner? I'd just like to take this time, this opportunity, to say that I think it's time for a change in Alabaster. I think it's time for a change of how decisions are made. I think it's a time for a change that the citizens of Alabaster have the opportunity to be involved and fully engaged with what goes on in this city. To if they have to question why we're doing what we're doing, that we have an answer for them. Not an excuse, not a reason, but a valid why. This is what we're doing, what we're doing. I think as taxpayers, as business owners, as just citizens who live here and our children as they grow up, they need to know that this place has their back that not only do we expect them to support and live here, but this, the city will support and live for them. And we can't do that unless we're all together. And that, that takes communication. Um, I was asked recently why I wanted to be mayor, and I, I think I approached that a while ago. But also one of the questions that also was followed up was why Alabaster and why am I invested or I'm, am I vested in Alabaster? Uh, yes, I am. I've lived here since 1993. I chose to move here and I chose to stay here because of the people and because of what the city was and who it was at that time. And I've seen this city grow. And as the city's grown, I've raised my family here. I've had two children uh, that uh, just, I could sit here and talk about forever about how, how proud I am and, and how wonderful I think they are. But I'm biased like the rest of us. But I've also buried a child here. And just the outpouring of support and love that we received from the community of Alabaster during that tragic time affirmed to me that this is where I wanted to stay. This is who I wanted to be around because these people loved my family through probably the darkest point of our life. So how can I give back to the city of Alabaster? We have some tough times that are coming up. We have tough times economically. Who knows as far as natural disaster what may happen because at any time they may have. I have experience with dealing with that, not just personally, but professionally. I've worked civil disturbances. I've worked tornadoes. I've worked hurricanes. I've been in a shooting war. I've been shot at. I've led troops in combat. I've led tactical teams on hostage rescue missions. I've knocked on doors to tell loved ones that loved ones weren't coming home. It breaks your heart. Especially a breaks your heart when you know that if there was anything that you could do that would impact it, how that would go, that was my duty. And my duty is to serve, to serve my people, to serve my community, as my God has put it on my heart and my soul to do that. So I've been blessed with the opportunity to be trained. I've been blessed with the opportunity to lead in, in tragic situations and in good situations. Some things work and some things don't. I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. But you know what? Being held accountable by the citizens keeps us in check and reminds us that we are responsible for all that we do. Thank you. Thank you. And now, closing comments for Mr. Brakefield. Mr. Brakefield? Hey, I want to thank the uh, Shelby Chamber of Commerce for putting on this event. This is a great opportunity to be able to reach our voters in a very unique manner during this time of COVID and, and social distancing. Um, during our discussion today, you've heard a lot about my four, you know, about four things that I, I feel like are really important to the city of Alabaster. First and foremost, public safety. It's important that we feel safe in our community. I proudly support our law enforcement officers and, officers and our firefighters. Through my years on council, I've continuously supported them through every equipment request, 
uh, along the way. Uh, for the Alabaster Police Department, we've done things such as body cameras for our police officers. We've done things such as moving them from cars to Tahoes, implementing a uh, workstation in their uh, Tahoe to make their day more efficient. I've supported those along the way. The big support here recently was the support of Alabaster City Police Station. Long overdue, excited to see it going on. Fire, fire department, from equipment needs for trucks, turnout gears, to uniforms, I've consistently supported our fire department. Here recently, the big support has come through the way of buying two fire engines as well as a ladder truck. We have both engines deployed. The ladder truck should come on board next year. And for both divisions, for both departments, I recently supported a new radio system where we are going to install a new radio tower, handheld radios to be able to address some of the dead spots across the city. You also heard me talk about education. Education is critical to any community. It's important that our kids get the absolute best public education that they possibly can. And I think that that's what Alabaster City Schools provides. I was proud to lead the initiative of separation and creating Alabaster City Schools years ago. And I'm proud to see the progress that they've made. We should work strongly together to make sure that our school system is the absolute best. Because when our school system is ranked high, we, re we have new families move to the city. When we have new families move to the city, retail and economic development will soon follow. We all benefit from increased uh, property values. Uh, another thing you heard me talk about was parks and the recs, uh, park and rec department. I'm excited to support a lot of the initiatives that are going on within the park and rec department. You see a lot going on at Veterans Park right now with expansion of fields, tracks, implementation of ba uh, bathrooms, parking space. The same thing is going on at Abbey Woolley Park with a new basketball court, new playgrounds, expansion of uh, walking trails. So excited to see those programs continue. And that's something that's going to be uh, part of my agenda as we move forward because I believe in improving our quality of life. Last thing that I want to touch on is financial responsibility. You heard me mention it earlier in my comments. In 2008, I came on board in the leanest of lean times. The last few years, we have had some prosperous times. Over the years, we've worked hard to put money back in our savings, in our fund balance, in our reserves. Right now, we're st typically standing somewhere around 30% in our re reserve fund, which both, most rating companies and bonding agencies only require you to have 15%. That has afforded us to receive a AA rating from Standards & Poor, which is significant because only about 19% of municipalities across the state of Alabama have a rating of AA or higher. In closing, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, watching these videos, getting to know you, the candidates that are running for mayor of Alabaster, and I look forward to seeing you at the polls on August 25th, and I ask that you vote Scott Brakefield for mayor of Alabaster. Thank you. That concludes our forum. Thanks again to both Scott Brakefield and Robert Goodner for joining us and for your willingness to share your vision for the city of Alabaster. Thanks also to our collaborative partners at Shelby County Newspapers, Inc. Finally, and most importantly, thanks to each of you for taking the time to view this video. We hope you found this program informative, and we encourage each of you to participate in the election on Tuesday, August 25th. We are adjourned.